Today's New Testament reading is from Colossians, the fourth chapter. Masters, treat your slaves justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us, that God may open to us a door for the word, to declare the mystery of Christ, on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear, which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Tychicus will tell you about all my activities. He is a beloved brother and faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage your hearts. And with him Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you. They will tell you of everything that has taken place here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you, and Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you have received instructions, if he comes to you, welcome him, and Jesus, who is called Justice. These are the only men of the circumcision among my fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you, always struggling on your behalf in his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has worked hard for you, and for those in Laodicea and in Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, greets you, as does Demas. Give my greetings to the brothers at Laodicea, and to Nympha and the church in her house. And when this letter has been read among you, have it also read in the church of the Laodiceans, and see that you also read the letter from Laodicea. And say to Archippus, See that you fulfill the ministry that you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome the Reverend Philip Booth. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning comes to us from Paul's letter to the Colossians, the fourth chapter. In particular, these inspired words. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each person. In the 1920s, a young scientist named Isa Schaefer wanted to perform an experiment. He took a friend out to a big empty field, and Isa asked this friend to put on a blindfold. And he then told him to simply walk in a straight line, as straight as he could across the field. Well, what happened is that the man started off okay, but then he began to veer to the right. And this veer became sharper and sharper until the man had walked in several circles, eventually ending when he ran into a stump close to where he had began. All the while, mind you, he thought he was walking in a straight line. If you try it yourself, you'll not do any better. This phenomenon has scientists a bit baffled, but the practical conclusion is that human beings lack the ability to travel very far in a straight line, especially when they don't have any point of reference, like a mountaintop or a star or the sun. It's like walking blindfolded in this case, or in a dense fog, or even in the dark. Now, what does this have to do with our text this morning? Simple. We Christians know that this very thing also applies to humans when it comes to living a perfect life. We can't, without a point of reference to guide us, walk the straight and narrow. The law written on our hearts is too clouded by sin. In fact, the Greek word for sin, as you may know, literally means to miss the mark. And we, who have been given a new life in our baptisms, who are empowered by the Holy Spirit, still sometimes fall into sin. Actually, often fall into sin. 
So why are we so surprised by the world's inability to walk according to the will and ways of God, especially when the world does not look to God as their point of reference? In our culture today, people reject and deny God's plan for their lives in every direction. I don't have to list off these hot topics that have inundated the news or our conversations or politics or even our pulpits. And Christians around the country have reacted in many different ways. Some, unfortunately, err on the side of acceptance and tolerance of such sins. Others err on the opposite end of the spectrum through violent speech or acts. But Christians who want to know the God-pleasing response to the sins of the world need to look no farther than our text. Hear it again. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. If a human cannot even walk in a straight line without a point of reference, it is so much more true that we cannot walk a path of righteousness without a light to guide us. That light, brothers and sisters in Christ, is the light of Christ. It may seem simple enough, but we all know that we failed to live a righteous life. But in our repentance, our failures are forgiven because Jesus lived the life we couldn't. He died the death we all deserve and he rose again to give us eternal life. Now, what does the world need to walk in the straight and narrow? Well, it needs the light of Christ too. And how are we as Christians equipped to have gracious speech? How are we equipped with the wisdom to answer the world? Well, dear friends, that also comes from Christ. God gathers us together in community to not only hear the word of forgiveness, but to encourage one another in our journeys of faith as we reach out to the world in love. From our text, Paul also knew the dangers of speaking the truth in love to a world that rejects God. He even asked the church at Colossus, he said, pray for us also that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear, which is how I ought to speak. The good news is that we who believe don't walk this path of life blindfolded because our point of reference is Christ himself. And because of his life, death, and resurrection, our sinful natures have been covered by his righteousness. And now when we preach that same message to the world, that clear gospel message of Christ, God will use us to bring others to him. And so now until Christ returns, may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.